It's T plus 31, or December 31st, the last day of the year. April's red pen ran out of ink, but after some scrounging she found a pencil, which is where our story starts. It's almost the new year, which we'll call year one. The book calls for a new calendar. There was actually a party that night in a building April was staying in, where 19 other people were living. Celebrate that they made the new year, that they actually reached that far. Maybe things were actually picking up. It's New Year's Day. All is quiet, Rikers lit a huge bonfire in Herald Square, while other people shot maybe a thousand balloons in Times Square to celebrate the new year. It's 6am and still dark and quiet outside. April used this to her advantage and went to Chelsea Pierce to do some trading since there was a market now. There's lots of people trading over there, even people trying to smuggle you out of Manhattan, which is still very impossible, since the Coast Guard controls the waters and helicopters spot anything from above. Every tunnel access is either locked down or guarded, so getting out isn't what you would call easy, if that's even what she wanted. But she had unfinished business still in Manhattan. After she did her shopping at the market, she returned home. The next day she was scavenging in the city. There was a running battle up and down 8th Avenue, the JTF had armored vehicles and were holding their own, but the Rikers were shooting RPGs from the upper floor of the building above. A JTF fire team went in, but before it continued, April got out of there and took the long way home. She went over to Tribeca. This new neighborhood gave her goosebumps, as she knew there was a lot of trafficking. She needed to scout the area before continuing to merge last known location at Warren Street. After dark, she went out to the piers and she made the mistake of getting too close to one of the piers. She saw people getting in a boat, with sentries looking out over the pier in the direction of the closest JTF checkpoint. The woman put on a boat had her hands tied. April went to the JTF checkpoint to tell them about the situation, but they said they would look into it once they had the resources. It's January 3rd. It's been a month since Bill was murdered. April was thinking about moving out. Every night she heard gunfire. The JTF is getting pushed back to Chelsea and she's at the edge of Rikers territory and a new group calling themselves the Last Man Battalion. Their leader, Charles Bliss, the one Mika wrote about, wants a new nation with him in charge of course. So she's living in the middle of a war zone. She didn't want to get hit by an RPG or get raped to death by Rikers. She liked it here but it was not worth staying. Today she would get out, look for a place below Houston Street. The first objective was now finding out who Merch was and where he is staying. Towards the back of the book she found a picture of some World War I soldiers with musical instruments, possibly Dutch. She remembered she stumbled across a page where it said Merch had Dutch ancestors. Could that be a coincidence? Is there any relation? We don't know yet. New Year's resolution for April is to go to every library to find pictures of those World War I soldiers, but where to do that? The main public library was close to the dark zone, so that would be too risky. Perhaps the New York University then, NYU. It's time to start scouting that place out. The next day, April walked down Broadway, all the way to Houston and cut over into their Lower East Side. She scouted a few places she could use as a new place to stay. April got close to the NYU library, which appeared quiet, but Washington Square Park, right next to it, was full of people. She decided to do surveillance for the next 24 hours and to enter the library afterwards. First she went to swing by one of the caches at the playground, wherever it might have been, to pick up some supplies. Later in the day she decided to see Dr. Liu again. She wanted to help them, be an eye on the street and let them run tests on her as she survived the dollar flu. In exchange she would want a channel open inside the post office. Dr. Liu had information on Bill's murder and she wasn't giving up on that yet. When at the post office, the doctor did some blood tests and took some other samples. She didn't get much out of him, but now at least she was inside. Next day, she was to meet Vasquez, a JTF officer that coordinated human intelligence. But for now, this was all she had to do. 24 hours passed and it's now the 5th of January. April had settled on a place, on the 4th floor above a restaurant. The family down there sometimes even made it work every now and again, and April had made a deal with them. April would go out for supplies and the family offered her a room. With a place to stay, she could now look for the picture. Walking towards the NYU, she entered the library. It was quiet, with a spooky vibe. As she took a few steps, she saw bodies hanging from the railings of the upper floor balconies. 
It had been rumored there was a cult of librarians who went after people that defaced books. But the place looked empty. Carefully, she started searching through the books for the photo of the World War I soldiers. And after a while of searching, she finally got the book and found the same photo. It looked like they were French soldiers, not Dutch. She tore the page out and as she was doing it, she realized that she made too much noise. She heard sounds deep in the sex right away and without even an attempt at stealth, she bolted straight at the door. She burst out of the door and she looked behind her as she saw librarians chasing her. But they wouldn't cross the street. April quickly walked down into the crowded park and after calming down, catching her breath, she traded some 9mm bullets with some locals for a meal to eat on the walk home. The day after, April wrote in her book, one page at the end of the book, the conclusion, had a hidden message. Every first letter of a paragraph combined spelled out, find me. April later found something which meant she couldn't stay. That something was the address that was clued in Merch's name all this time, Warren Merchant. She was going to move over to Tribeca, to Warren Street, even though it has been the most dangerous part of Manhattan, on her way to find Merch. Using a Dutch-English dictionary, she translated the name of Mr. Merchant, or should we say, Mr. Koopman. We arrive at the last day, April recorded in her diary, January 7th, with the writings in brown pen. It was hard to reach Warren Street, street gangs were in constant battle with the JTF and it wasn't the place to go if you didn't want bullets flying around you. But as she arrived on the address on Warren Street, no one was there. Except there was a missing person poster on the door. As she looked at it, her heart started pounding. It was her face on that poster. She knew people were watching her, but didn't know who Merch was. How did he get the photo? Was he watching her the whole time? Still, April was determined to make it to Merch, and she was thinking of what she was going to say. On the poster, it said, please contact me using, and then a phone number. A puzzle, once again. Every letter and its position referred to a word in a sentence. For example, the first number is 2, so as it's the first number, we'll look at the first line and the second word. Spell it out and you get the following message. April, I've gone dark. Come to 117 West 58 basement level, Koopman. This address was in the dark zone, just under Central Park. This blew April's mind. He had been watching her. He must have been. Merch contacted her and she was about to see him. So April took off to the dark zone. As she was on her way, she approached the dark zone. Nearly there, she was walking on East 47th Street when suddenly a strange man approached. He looked like a division agent, but there was something off about him. Nice backpack. Where'd you get it? A friend. It looks familiar. Where are you going with it? Over the walls. Really? Be careful what you find in there. And more careful what you bring out. April was scared shitless, but she managed to stay calm. After exchanging a few words with Aaron Keener, she continued to the walls. But before she could climb over them, she was stopped by a JT officer with an all too familiar name. Headquarters, I have a single civilian Caucasian female attempting to enter the dark zone. Look, you can't stop me. I can't let you. Hang on, HQ. What are you saying, lady? My name is April Kelleher, and I've got to get in there. The proof I need, it's behind those walls, and I'm not going to stop until I get it. All right. Convince me that letting you go in there is an assisted suicide. I've been in there before. I can handle myself. Tell you what. I'll let you go, but if you get killed in there, you don't come crying to me, okay? Yeah, I promise you. Now, if you'll excuse me. HQ, never mind. After this, April went dark. Until the expansion of Dark Zone with DC 07, 8 and 9, we couldn't go to the previously mentioned address. But now we can. Upon reaching 117 West 58th Street, we see an entrance that leads down into a basement, just like Merch mentioned. It led to a room which was definitely a hideout as it was stocked with supplies and sleeping bags. There's also a whiteboard on which names are written with coordinates behind them. April and Bill's names are on there, including coordinates behind their names. When entering April's coordinates in Google Maps, we travel to a building on Union Avenue in Queens. Bill's coordinates don't lead anywhere. What this means, we wouldn't know. Did she find merch? Do the coordinates refer to their whereabouts? Is Bill alive? 
The story of April brings up more questions than answers. And as the Division story is at an end, perhaps we're never getting the answers. Or are we?